I'm Dr. Bryony Core, Technology Analyst covering 3D printing at ID Tech X, and I'm joined today by Mr. Dave Barty from Rico Europe. Mr. Barty. Good morning. Good morning. Could you tell me a little bit more about Rico's activities within 3D printing, but also more broadly, what, what you're up to? Yeah, so Rico is uh, best known as uh, number one in document management and in the um, uh, cut sheet markets for office uh, digitization. Um, from that, we've got a number of core skills that we've brought out, and additive manufacturing is one of those areas where we can implement those skills. So fundamentally, uh, knowledge of toner allows us to manage powder, and those powder technologies allow us to use different uh, applications within the additive manufacturing market. The first one of which is behind me, and this is uh, laser sintering. So we're looking at industrial scale applications for particularly automotive, aerospace, but it has spin-offs into healthcare. Yeah. And we're talking here about the ability to do uh, functional prototyping, so not just a one-off, but also small, um, short runs of 10 up to maybe 100 devices. This SLS technology is fundamental to the systems that we sell, and uh, these are large-scale systems and, and not desktop, so hence the reason we call it additive manufacturing and not 3D. Absolutely. All right. And these are polyamide. Uh, that you're using here? Uh, we have polyamides, but we also have polypropylenes and PBT, which we're demonstrating here. So the powder's where we can add value, um, glass bead technologies, um, really for more robustness, but also to be able to weld into existing extruded um, applications or injection molded applications. The spin-off from this is um, where we can combine other technologies, which is inkjet and additive manufacturing together. A little bit of an example of where you're moving towards. Yes, yeah, so this uh, case demonstrates the um, combination of our print head technology and also of the evolution and revolution of new uh, materials that we are working on in uh, Japan. One of which is, uh, is this, which is a very tactile uh, method of producing synthetic organs. Synthetic organs is not uh, a morbid uh, application, but it's uh, used primarily for medical training where real body parts are, are difficult to come by. We can simulate with a cyst, different colours. We can also put the internal workings of a, an organ together. And you see in the case here, we have uh, another example of the kidney. We have a liver, we have a heart, and we also can create uh, hollow structures with veins. And that's for medical training, so catheter training. Uh, for the livers, we can actually take the uh, 3D CAD and make an MRI of uh, a true patient's uh, dimensions and that allows the um, uh, trainee uh, surgeons to practice on something that is far less expensive than a real uh, material and of course it's in uh, far better quantity and supply. This maps with uh, print head technology that already exists in the market and if we use a different technology we can then start to work on additive manufacturing which is a binder process whereby we're encapsulating um, glass, ceramic, uh, metal, peak, so heavy engineered or specialist engineering plastics, but we're not damaging the internal uh, parts, so we're not sintering it as we produce it. We put a, an encapsulation around, going back to what I was saying about our competence in toner, which is an encapsulated pigment, in this case it's an encapsulated metal glass ceramic, which we then react with an aqueous fluid to create the bond chemically rather than by uh, using heat or laser. That you would obtain after that would that need to be sintered to debind it away from the aqueous binder, or could you use it as is? Uh, it depends on what the base material is. Um, with peak, the, the great thing about this is typically when you sinter peak, um, you have to dispose of all of the uh, waste materials. What we do is take it out, shake it, and we can reuse all of the spare materials. For it. If it's metal parts, we don't sinter it as we produce it. We produce the part first, mm -hmm. and then we effectively bake it rather than sinter it right. uh, afterwards. So we're, we're um, post-treating the finished product. All right. And so my final question is, what do you think of the ID Tech X show? Well, this is our first time exhibiting at ID Tech X. Um, I've been here for the last three years, and I think it's a great opportunity for us to bring some um, new applications from R&D to get people the experience of, um, of what the market's looking for and to network with people who are potentially um, partners or even customers for these products. And we can feed that information directly back into our R&D uh, department. 
So an example of uh, a new product. Uh, this is the first time that this has been shown outside of Japan. And what we're looking at here is energy harvesting. So we're using a, a solar dye cell, which is the, uh, the red part, although we can make different colors, uh, yellows and blues. And we're capturing it either on a, a solid sheet, such as this, and this is what's powering the turntable, um, just from the ambient light, indoor light. Or we have um, a flexible application here, which could be applied to wearable technologies and um, more kind of robust applications. And that again is powering the LED. So everything that you see twinkling here um, is being powered by the uh, operation in the cell. And you have it for sensors, um, either gas sensors, CO2 sensors, temperature sensors, mm. but also um, one of the key areas for this is um, IoT applications where you want to place a sensor but you're never going to change the battery. Yes. So you need to be capturing energy all of the time. And with our semiconductor business we also have low level uh, energy management for automotive, um, for things like key fobs and infotainment. So we have energy harvesting, we also have low level energy management within our cell. And this really is a showcase for this product um, and to enable us to really gather some uh, market feedback as to where we take it. Well, thank you very much for this very Pleasure. informative uh, interview. Thank you.